What's up, YouTube? Don here, and welcome back to another episode with Eastern CT Vapor. Now, today's episode, we are going to be going back to the UL Raphael tank. We're not going to do completely about the tank, but we are going to be visiting the VRBA section. Now, anybody new to this that doesn't know, VRBA stands for Vertical Rebuildable Atomizer. What this is, is instead of purchasing your coils for the Rafale tank, you can purchase this section and rebuild your coils. But it can be a little bit tricky. You're going to see this in the dive down. When I first got this and I was practicing to build, I had over a dozen coils stacked in a pile because I just kept running into problem after problem after problem. So, why don't we take a dive down to the tape. I'm going to show you the packaging, what comes in the packaging, the extras, the goodies that comes in it show you how to disassemble it i'm going to show you guys how to make the coil that goes in it i'm going to show you guys how to get your cotton on it and get it back into the coil section then we're going to put it back into the tank juice it up we're going to come back up here to facetime we're going to have a vape go over some pros and cons and some final thoughts so let's hit the table but before we can do any of that you guys know what the deal is we need to hit the credit what were you thinking? What was going on inside your head? Tell me, were you drinking? Or oh, just plain insane? How were you feeling? With another couple thousand dead? Or were you lying? Just playing games? Placing your best? Russian roulette? Well, I'm your table with our Rafael VRBA section here is the coil out of it this is how it looks and squirrely there this has been a little used definitely is time for a new one okay. the supplies we're gonna need right off the bat here in the beginning we're gonna need the coil the Allen key that comes with the kit and we're gonna need to open the kit and get the coil tool that comes with it okay Definitely going to need those, and we are also going to need a pair of wire cutters, and preferably 22 gauge Canthal A1. Okay, that's what I like to use for this particular build. Um, if you want to use 24, so on and so forth, you're more than welcome to. But to start, we need to disassemble this coil. So first off, you're going to want a pointy pair of tweezers, like so. Um, these are out of the Coil Master kit, the V2 kit. Um, I believe the version 1 kit has them too, so um, any pointy tweezers will work just fine. What you need to do is take this ring that's in here and pinch that together and get that out of there. Okay, we can put that to the side for now. We will revisit that later next. At the bottom of the coil, you can see there's a little teeny grub screw. And if this is the first time that you're doing this, ladies and gentlemen, I do want to say, at the bottom of this kit, there's an extra baggie of stuff that comes with it, an extra coil, grub screws, O-rings. The coil wrapping tool that they give you, it does not have a grub screw in this hole. When you first get this, that grub screw is not in that hole. Okay, and what a lot of people will do is take the grub screw out of the coil and swap it into this and switch them back and forth. You get a kit with extra grub screws in it. So, I mean, personally, how I've done it, it's a lot easier, is I just take that extra grub screw and just leave a screw in each of them. So that way there I'm not risking dropping that little teeny tiny grub screw. Back to where we were, we want to... We don't want to take it completely out, just give it like a half turn, three quarter turn, just to loosen it up and pull that bottom out. That's the base of the coil. And at this point we can 
push, pull, do whatever we need to. But get that thing out of there. I'm gonna push upward. That's the coil, ladies and gentlemen. It's gotten a little beat. Definitely was time for a new one. Oh yeah, that coil was pretty gonked. Anyway, next we can start our new coil. We are going to want to take a nice section of our canthal wire, whichever gauge we decided to use here. Okay. I preferably, while I'm unrolling, I like to go one, one time around the spool and then a half. That's where I get the best results, so you get this nice long piece. I'd rather have too much out than not enough. Next, what you're going to want to do is take your Allen key and go to the grub screw that's on the wire tool and open it up. Okay, you can see straight through that hole, you know it's wide open. Next, we can take our piece of cantle on. slide it through there and we don't need it the length of the tool but you can put a nice little section I think that's acceptable right there take our grub screw again here a little allen key and we don't need to wrench down on it but definitely snug it up a little bit and this is where we begin to wrap our tool now the directions say you need to cover all of this section here Okay, before that little notch there, that's what it says in that fine print on there, is completely cover the building stem. That's the fine print. So we have to build all the way up until this little cutoff. And I suggest, I've done this before, okay, where I didn't really put a whole lot of spaces. You're going to want to make a spaced coil. You can't dry burn it to get rid of any hot spots. So you better to just make a spaced coil and put more spaces than not in it. Um, I've done it where the spaces were really tight and it came out to like a .9 ohm coil and it was just total trash. So um, I'll show you where I get the best results, me personally. Something just about like that. Now when you get to the top here, some people have said to get into this groove that's on the back here. Let me see if I can focus it for you. Some people have said to kind of drop it into that groove right down in the back. When I've gotten it in there, it's very hard to take it out of that groove when you're going to slide the coil off of the tool. You can see how I've spaced my coil. That's the better results that I've gotten. So instead of going into that ledge, what you need to do is wrap your coil right to the tip top. So it ends right here at the edge. And then what you need to do is bend it up. Just like so. Wrapped it and wrapped it. And so we wrapped and wrapped until we got to the top, right here at the edge. It's not a perfect 90 degree bend or anything, it's um, not the end of the world. Um, if you want to make it a little more fancy, the better, the better your bend, the easier. So sometimes what I like to do is 
you know, maybe take a pair of pliers and put a little more of a 90 degree bend in it. Like that's, that's perfect right there. Right at that corner, you wanna get almost a perfect 90 degree bend. And that right there, guys, is perfect. I know it's a little tight at the top, but that's not that big of a deal. Okay, what we wanna do next now. We're gonna want a pair of scissors because we're gonna need to cut a strip of cotton. You know, some people like using cotton bacon or you know, stuff along those lines. The easiest thing to use here is Kogendo cotton, the pads, like these. Okay, because what you're going to want to do is have a pair of scissors handy. And you're going to want to cut a strip of cotton that's exactly as long as the coil is. So you see how I got this held here? I'm gonna wanna cut my strip right about there. I know where my start is. So now we're just gonna cut on through. Just like that. So now, we judge it. And what you want is it's supposed to where you start, it's supposed to wrap around one time and then come back and meet. And every time that I've done this, this strip is the perfect length. Okay. Before we get much further, all this extra crap up here at the top, we can, I mean, you still want a little piece up there, but you can cut the majority of it off. Leave yourself a nice little strip on the top and you still have your strip in there. Now what you're going to want to do, it probably will be a little easier if you remove one little layer. Okay. So go ahead and get rid of the layer. And as tight as you can, wrap this piece of cotton around that coil. Keeping it as tight as you can. and tight like that. Next we can take our sleeve here, slide that over, and what I like to do is twist it the same way that I twisted the cotton. See it slid on quite easy because of the fact we took off that other sheet. Okay, so now this is a good time, now that you got that on there majority of the way. We can loosen up that little grub screw. And gently, we don't want to pull that sleeve off, but we want to get this coil off of that tool. See, we got a majority of the way in there. We gently want to keep on pushing very gently. We want to get this coil the rest of the way in there. And that should just about do it right there. You'll kind of feel it, it kind of drops into place. And you can see our feed holes are covered nice. And we got our room here at the top. You can see our coils nice and wrapped. There at the bottom, it's right there at the bottom ledge. I'm gonna point that out to you. Inside of there, you can see this little lip here on the inside edge. And our bottom of our coil is basically lined right up with that. Again, you're going to basically feel it fall right into place. Okay. 
This can be the tricky part because this coil can spin inside of this. What we need to do is you see there's these little notches on the bottom of this. They need to line up with the notches right here on the bottom of this. So what we're going to try to do here is if you can see at the bottom here, you see there's that hole in this piece. Flip it. A little hole there's a little bit of juice in it. I'm gonna take this and get that right into that hole so it comes out of that right there, like you see. And you know what? We lucked out because this fit together perfectly. Clips right into place, our notches lined right up. We're good to go. You could feel it click in and you see all them notches lined right up into the bottom piece. So now we're going to go back to that grub screw. And this is basically adding your finishing touches. So you're going to want to tighten down on this. And this is where you want it fairly snug because this is, like I said, this is your ending piece right here. So. Go ahead and cut this extra piece, cut it as flush as possible. Okay, and last but not least, we need to get this ring back onto the top there to hold that lead. So, what you do is you take your pointy tweezers and you get inside those holes like that. Pull that ring nice and tight. Once that piece, I got it just barely in there. You can see I just barely got that piece in there. It's just sitting at the edge of the rim up here. So even if you gotta use like your finger or something, do your best to get that ring to sit down there some you don't want it to sit right at the top edge that's perfect so it's just sitting under the, the ledge there and that is a complete coil see how that's fitting under there we just take our cutter nice and flush here cut that off your coil's done. This thing's ready to go. So all we do at this point is we thank Big Lou for the crew juice that he gave me at Vape Northeast. The faded apple. This is a definitely a good apple flavor too. We're gonna take this juice here and we are going to climb up the coil. We can take our base section here, screw our coil back into that base section like so. And we can take our tank, reinsert it, add some juice, and it's ready to vape. So I've gone over all the bases, I showed you guys what to do with what supplies, how to wrap your coil, how to get it off the jig and into the casing, showed you how to tidy it up, how to secure it, reinstall it, so I think that it is safe to say it is time to go back up to FaceTime, have us a vape, and go over a couple final thoughts. And welcome back to FaceTime. Now, I know the question everybody's got is after all that work we just went through to build this, how does it vape? Let's have a vape and find out. It's a very good vape. Um, 
the flavor is quite good. Um, in my opinion, I think the flavor is a bit better than the purchase coils that you would buy, um, like the 0.2 ohms and stuff. I think this one has a little bit better flavor. If you guys know, the inside has that patented spitback fucking, you know, anti-spitback thing. Um, and all that, it puts it, uh, you know, that spirally thing in the chimney. The coils that you buy over the, the wicking and the coil, if you look at it. Matter of fact, let's put a picture up so you guys can see. You're seeing that there's that piece of metal that goes over it. So all that's, you know, visible is just your airflow shaft. So you got your cotton, your coil on the outside, and then that piece of metal, and then once that clears, then there's shit in the middle, that spinny thing. So there's like so much that's restricting it. So, um, Vape and Fagan showed a way how to get that out and called it the Refagan tank at that point, getting that, that anti-spitback thing out of there. Um, I, you know, but in my opinion, the coils that you buy having that little metal piece on there is just another piece to restrict it. Whether it's your flavor, your vapor, your airflow, it's just another piece to restrict it. I feel like this tank was just built around restrictions. The chimney had the restrictor with the spiral thing. The coils you buy had restriction with that metal plate. I'm really digging this VRBA section because, say, if you do, if you didn't do the the Rafagan thing. It's one less piece to restrict you, so I think that's where I'm finding the flavors a little bit better and the vape production's a little better because you don't have that metal washer on top of it, okay? Now diving into some pros and cons for this coil, okay? Starting with pros, you get to rebuild it. You get to make whatever own coil you want on whatever day you want. Um, you don't have to go out and buy any more coils at this point, you know? Um, if you're running short on time or you need a quick fix and you know your time's an issue, of course you can always go out and buy more. But as long as you take care of this and, and treat it well, you really will never have to buy another coil again. You can just always rebuild it and rebuild it. Point two if you want, point four, point eight. Shit, you can build a one point two ohm if you want. That's the glory with this thing. You build what you want. Also, like I stated, it doesn't have that metal washer, so it's a little bit less restrictive. Um, opens the, the channel up a little bit to get you a little bit more vapor and flavor, etc. A big pro in my opinion as well is you can use whatever wire you want in it. You don't have to use a 22 d you can use 26, 24. Um, I think that the, the hole the wire goes to be tightened down. I don't really think you're going to fit much bigger than 22. You might be able to fit 20. Um, that's the only restriction at that point is you can't really go much bigger than that. But aside from that, I mean, you can really put the wire of your choice in which is a big pro but to dive into some cons now the feed holes on it um, compared to your normal purchase coil these are um skinny and tall i don't have any problems with dry hits or anything like that um it's all goes to you know how you build it if you wick it right if it's too tight in there or anything i don't have any of those issues but me personally i think that they could have made them them feed holes a little bit bigger um Again, stated I don't have an issue with dry hits or wicking issues, but it could probably wick better than what it is if them holes were just a little bit. Other con, um, this thing can be a pain in the dick to build on. Um, I stated it in the opening and everything. I had a pile of over a dozen coils from the first meetings, which then there enfolds my intention of this video is to help the next person out because I had such a hard time and I wasted like half a day trying and trying and trying so um you know big con there is it can be um, a little bit of a pain in the ass to build on unless you know you hopefully got you know, some insight on an easier way but for that, I think that's going to wrap it up for pros and cons section of this review. Now, why don't I hit you guys with a price point? It's not too, too expensive. For what it's worth and what you're going to save in the end, it is entirely worth it. Now, what this tank is, or sorry, what this RBA section is usually marketed at is around $13.99, you know, $14, $15, give or take, okay? 
from Vapor DNA has got this at a fantastic price, $9.99. You get it for $10. And again, what you save, that is entirely worth it. One pack of five coils is going to run you, call it 15, give or take, okay? With this, you can build 100 coils. I mean, granted, you're going to have to pay for your can't all and your cotton at that point in a little bit of time. But you won't have to buy any more coils. So spending an extra $10 for this one little thing, I think that's completely worth it. I think even a $15 price point on it, um, if you didn't get it from Vapor DNA, I think that would even be worth it. But they get you a much better price at $9.99. So Vapor DNA, link will be in the description below. And that, ladies and gentlemen, I think is going to wrap it up for this review. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope I was able to help you out. Maybe get you a little bit easier way to build this tank in case you were running into issues like I had. I hope you did enjoy the video, though. All right. Let me know what you thought about this video. Comment section down below. Throw me a couple lines. Let me know what you liked or disliked. Also, hit that like or dislike button so I know what you thought. Don't forget also to hit the subscribe button. Check out my videos, future, past, and present. Tons more to come. Tons have passed. So don't miss out, guys. Also, check out Kassad.org, NotBlowingSmoke.org, and TheVapingMilitia.org. Check out all of their calls to action. And be sure, while you're there, to sign up to fight for your vaping rights. And hell, while you're there, you can find me on social media. Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, all those dot com forward slash Eastern CT Vapor. And also, I now have a website, www.easternctvapor.weebly.com. I will have the link in the description below. And that wraps it up for this review, guys. I thank you very much. I hope you guys fully enjoyed this. I hope that it made your day a little easier for this build. For Eastern CT Vapor, guys. This is the UL Rafael VRBA section. And this is Don, guys. And always, always remember to vape on.